<laughs> Take it away, Andrew. Yippee. Oh, God. Uh, welcome to this episode of the official podcast. It's, I don't know, in my mind, episode 4,852, because I could do this for a lifetime. Uh, we're brought will. here. We're brought here today by three great continents around the world, featuring four great men that are even stronger than those continents. And today, using our incontinence and incompetence, we're going to talk about a lovely, a lovely little chart that Kaya and Jackson seem to be giddy over. Why don't you guys take it away? I, I, I you know, Jackson this is, came this to is me. From my no, research. no, no, you're right. <laughs> I came, came to you to with me, this Jonesing. Chart. Jonesing, you were like, Kai, I'll suck your dick. I need a topic, man. And please, man, I haven't had a topic in like two hours, man. Come on, dude. Like, you've known me forever, man. I'm good for it, man. Give me a topic. And I was like, fine, you can have this one. So oh, it's Jackson's it. topic now. Lead in. Yeah. So um, basically, I was doing some research on the internet regarding virginity uh, <laughs> to find out if, if maybe it's all right to be a 24-year-old virgin. And I came across this interesting chart uh, posted by the Washington Post where vir did you boys know that virginity uh, rates have skyrocketed in the last decade? Yep. So in 2008, 8% yeah. of men under uh, 30 were virgins. So that means no uh, female sex partners since they turned 18. 8%. That's a, that's a pretty modest amount, you know, one in 10 people. Not bad. Not a whole lot of virgins around at that point. Pretty good. In the last 10 years, it has risen. In 2018, it was reported to be 27%. That is insane. That's that's such a large skyrock. Uh, like a, a, a large sky jump rock. in number. Yeah. I was going to say <laughs> yeah. skyrocketing. Of yeah, the, the statistic is a yeah. giant <laughs> fucking boulder hurling through space for everyone to see. <laughs> It, it really has skyrocketed, and so I, maybe we can put it's the graph on screen, but it, again, it starts at 2008, and then over the next 10 years, it increased by 20%. How? To where, I guess, three years, it must be even worse now, I mean, right? Because it just kept increasing, and this, the last data point from 2018, at which point it was a third of the yeah, population. It, it, it just broke the graph after that. So it, it just fucking... Like COVID happened and it just destroyed the graph. They couldn't calculate how many virgins so there were anymore. It's coin. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I saw that too. So a bunch of dejected people in the comments were like, well, you know, probably COVID is to blame for this without actually looking at the graph. Like this it's is pre-COVID. Yeah. I mean, this if you look at, if you we look at the graph, if you look at the graph, um, if you analyze it, it, it it's been graphed. climbing steadily, graph. It's been climbing steadily since 2008. There's been no dips. It's just constantly going up. And then in about 2017, I would say it started going up at an increased rate, like a, a more steep... <laughs> Exponentially. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if we're at the, at the tip of the crest, like how they were talking about the COVID, uh, the peak, if we're at the tip of the virginity, you know, issue. Now or if there it's is just going to keep going up. There's something specific <laughs> about it though. So men have climbed over the last 10 years about 20% whereas women have barely climbed at all, only a couple percent points. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Well, I, it's a, no. <laughs> no. Women get sex easier. That's yeah. not a mystery. Well, I, I was being sarcastic. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm not ripping on you. Ah, I see. But it's expected. And I, I always love these graphs because, you know, we, we live in this culture where, oh, you want to get married, dude? Why don't you just smash 20 pussy a day? And then you see these graphs where married people have almost infinitely more sex than solo people in the hookup culture, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, like people shared another graph. I don't know if you guys caught that one in the chat of share with no sex in the past year. And it compares married people with unmarried people. And all the unmarried people are basically incels. People who aren't in long-term relationships, walking around. They've vegetarian transcended with no pussy. the need for the flesh, Kaya. What don't you understand? They're not having sex by choice. They're stronger now. Well, I think it, I think it's fairly <laughs> obvious to assume that people in relationships or marriages are going to have more frequent sex than those that aren't in in relationships. It didn't used to be. No, I don't know. Maybe it's because I grew up on those like atheist forums and shits. But I basically, you know. 
grew up with this perception that, you know, oh, married people, oh, what are you going to settle down at fucking 20? What are you, some sort of a Bible thumper prude? You're never going to have sex again. Oh, your sex life is going to die. You know, that's a meme, right? Your sex life is going to die if you settle down. And now, I mean, look at the fucking graph. Everybody is just rolling through life without a girlfriend, apparently. At least a third of men under 30 are... Uh, report zero female sex partners since they turned 18. That is, sad. They're all having sex with men. <laughs> oh, oh well, it says hmm. sex partner, not female partner. No, it does say female. On yeah, this it says girl. female partner. Does it? Oh, yeah. maybe fuck, they only coincidentally the... interviewed gay Wait, men. What? Where do you see that on the graph? I, I only see the, young the male original virginity. One. Yeah, directly underneath that. Read oh, the little... zero fe- oh, sorry. Yeah, I didn't even catch that. Mm-hmm. Oh, so is homosexuality increasing? Is it a pandemic? Yeah, maybe everyone's <laughs> just going gay. No. They've chosen no. the better path. <laughs> no. Jackson's like, no. No, I don't, I don't think so. I don't Jackson's think like, that's impossible. That. I'm not gay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm still a virgin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would be... I would love to see that updated to 2021... Yeah, I'd be oh, yeah, very well. interested to know what the um, the impact of the last few years has been because it it I mean the evidence is right there. It is that, that that's astronomical levels unseen before. Like that they were having way more sex well, back in 1989. Yeah, but we don't know unseen before. Like maybe old ancient history humans never had sex. Maybe rarely people had sex back in the no. day. No, I, th- I think they had a lot of sex. Like, no, yes, we don't call like conquest, I th- I pillaging, and such. Sex. Yeah, no, they, yeah. they could just have sex whenever they wanted if you were strong. There enough. was also less things to do back then, so you were more inclined to want to have sex. <laughs> Wait, how far back are we going? I was, I was talking about like the age of kings, Adam and, and Eve. Such. Yeah, fucking yeah, ancient like Greece had a cavemen. god had a flower that they used as birth control, and they literally drove it to extinction because they fucked too much. Like people oh, used to fuck uh, back then. Yeah, a- ancient Greece was just a f- giant orgy, yeah. essentially. All just body fluids and such. So, uh, actually, what do you guys think has caused this massive jump since two thousand and eight? The internet, hundred percent. Are you serious? Obviously, what's the internet existed before two thousand and eight. But the internet, internet capacity wasn't is yeah, but this, not in the way it is now. Yeah, not even close yeah. to the usage now. Yeah. People this literally absolutely. live there's, on Reddit and Twitter now. And there's a giant meme amongst kids where it's like, "Ew, sex, gross, yucky." Ooh, I have. I actually have noticed that in the last maybe five or so years, the internet has gone from being like so pro-sex to now almost uh, the internet has gotten about sex. yeah the internet's gotten really babied and i hate it they're always like oh god i hate my life oh sex is disgusting ew look at this thing i don't like it Why are you saying sex is disgusting talk there's a bunch of memes where it's like they'll be like oh you know don't tell me what sex is bro ew just found out he has sex you don't see that in your timeline I've I have seen not seen not no, There's I fucking have people who I'll, I'll back, I'll back Never in 20 up. years I have, have I seen that. a meme like I, that I, I check I, out uh, I, Yeah I check out Team Fortress 2 content a lot Cause like I the still rabble. like <laughs> <laughs> You're diving deep into it Andrew. Well I still like Gary's mod videos and shit And there's still a lot of great stuff people make with Source Filmmaker but a ton of it is just like Terrible low effort memes that are like Oh man look at Scout he has sex That's terrible Ew yeah, yucky like, there's, there's all sorts of shit on the internet where it's like, oh, I hate my life and I don't want to have sex and ill girlfriends, yuck. It's, it's like, everyone's gotten so weak and lame. I do, think, I do think there's a general notion on the internet at the moment that it's bad that men like sex, or if a man yeah. likes sex, it is bad. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but then, like, in the same breath, I see... Rightfully so, in my opinion, like sex workers and such, female sex workers, like OnlyFans and such, yeah, being it's praised. So, population is, if anything, super over sex. You have fucking OnlyFans and Tinder being like the major corporations no, but, now. But Probably. only for women. You have fucking only Cardi B reenacting sex acts on the fucking stage every single fucking year. It's, it's, I don't know. Can't be that people are anti sex unless they're like, Sour grapes, Elliot Roger types on the incels forums going like, I don't want to have sex anyway. Sex is dumb. I think but only attractive people are allowed to like sex publicly. That's the issue. That might be it. <laughs> it, it might be Cardi B is not attractive, dude. I mean, she's not unattractive. 
uh, she, uh, I mean, she's very, <laughs> very, very stupid. <laughs> she's repulsive on multiple levels. This is the bitch, if, in case you don't remember, who, who was bragging about how she drugged and dropped men yeah. for which she should be in prison, but she isn't. Very hideous bitch, but no, I don't know. I, there's probably multiple factors. There's probably like 100 fucking factors driving the incel rate up but i mean i think there's only I wish, a like incel coin i, I wish incel had a crypto coin or something that i could have invested in because i never knew that back like five years ago or eight years ago when elliot roger when he became a meme that one day everybody would slowly turn into an incel that is an investment i should have made is just investing in incels well, it's incels those always forms are well, it, it doesn't off. always have to be involuntary some of them might just be abstaining from sex not I don't think, either. I highly doubt it. I genuinely believe yeah. nobody is being no. a virgin more these days by choice. No fucking yeah. chance. So what are the factors? I know then? maybe one or two people. Maybe one or two people I in think my the personal factors life are who are simple. by choice sexless. I think it's very simple. Uh, you have a lot of dudes that probably aren't like, you know, the, the cream of the crop who have been conditioned by the internet to hold out for the perfect woman, a 10 out of 10, and they won't settle for anything less under any circumstances. No, and when a guy's a 20, they'll I, settle for anything. No, that, I disagree. That is very wrong, no, Jackson. No, no dude, fucking no. chance. No, you're disagree. both right. Look, look, Charlie is right. I absolutely, as the resident expert, you know, what are we called? Zoographer? No, zoologists. Like, incel zoologists. You guys know, like, up until a couple of years ago, the incels used to hate me because I was so fucking into them. And, no, that is a the thing. These guys will not fucking settle. They really... Exactly. I don't know why. Like, you go onto an incel forum and the guy's, like, this thing. He's uploading photos of his classmates. Like, look at this fake fucking slam pig. I'd never settle for her. Yeah, but you know what? I'm, gonna, no, I'm not gonna yeah. fuck her, but I'm coping. still an incel. No, and, and that's also just coping. Incels, he absolutely would fuck her if she, if, she, if she let him. And incels absolutely are also a very would. small sliver of this population. This is anyone under the age Apparently of 30. Not. It's and, not yeah, like twenty seven percent of you're, them. You're sexless, not gonna yeah, so. you're not gonna get to thirty percent of these people just from incels. Thirty percent of those people are not incels. That's not the only reason or the biggest that is reason. A good point. I, I I highly doubt that thirty percent of people are going around without sex by their own accord. I think that it's, is that is involuntary. I think it's the increase in just all the shit we have available in our lives, the incredible like demands for entertainment and all the stuff that comes out and the easeability of life. People just don't care anymore. I'll say this, and I'll say this only one. What the fuck? Don't post shit like that, or I'm gonna ban you. All right. I lost my train of thought. You said I'll say this once. Oh yeah, look. The incels were right about one thing, which I never thought I'd say. I don't know if you guys remember this, but probably a hundred fucking episodes ago, I brought up something that I learned from them called Juggernaut Theory, which is... That's a cool name. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very incredible. Cool name. <laughs> it, it's a cool name for something that is very, very not cool, which is basically they're saying that even the ugliest chick can get like... So what's basically happening is that the top 1% of good-looking men get all the pussy, and the other 99% of men don't. Because of Tinder, like used to be, you know, a girl would have to settle for the guys in her own neighborhood. But because now we have the internet, she can just hook up with anyone anywhere, thanks to online dating sites. So they all flock to the handsome guys. So the top 1% of handsome dudes get all the pussy, is that, while is everybody that else does not. That sounds like it. It is a thing. That, that's yeah. a thing, right? And they've been proven right. So study after study has shown that, like, women on, whatever, Plenty of Fish and uh, all the other sites, they go for... They rate like 80% of the men as unfuckable and only 20% of them as good looking. And Whereas men, they? I mean, well, I don't blame them. I'm just saying I'm trying to explain that for once somehow incels were right about one of their fucking weirdo theories. It's, it's true. The internet made handsome men more accessible, mm -hmm. which meant that less handsome men are. Their market value dropped drastically. So just get more attractive. I think the solution is easy, fucking idiots. All right, so we've, yeah. we've discussed the causality of this uh, upward trend of virginity among our uh, male counterparts. Not counterparts, we are males. <laughs> our male uh, allies, <laughs> friends, whatever you want to call them. Um, so what do you think the uh, outcome of this is going to be? Do you think this is going to be a lot more... Do you think it's going to keep climbing or do you think it's going to plateau at some point? Do you think we're going to reach 100% mass critical levels of virginity? 
But like, what, what, what do you, th- where do you guys see this going? Yeah, I think we're gonna be crawling on Earth, and there's gonna be like this one circle ring floating in space, like in orbits called Elysium, where just the one percent of good-looking men are gonna be <laughs> fucking, and the rest of us are gonna be on Earth in exoskeletons trying to fuck. All the women are up in Elysium, <laughs> just out of our reach. <laughs> we're gonna be stuck on Earth with like the fucking Slayton sisters. Yeah. Have we spoken about your virginity, Kaya? Have we? Uh, I don't feel like I know what? your like <laughs> the story. Of, I, I would like, story to, cl- of your I would like to clear up the record here and say that I am not a virgin. That's just what a virgin <laughs> would say. Yeah, yeah. all right, Mister Twenty Eight Percent. I will not. I will not accept this slander. I don't oh, know wait. what that means, Jackson. That is right. There's, uh, the stats don't lie. Twenty-seven percent of people under thirty are virgins, so that means one out of four. One of us four has to be a virgin. Oh so shit! Who is it? Oh Jesus who is it? Christ! Put your hands Do you know up. What? Jackson. Oh wait, you're right. What the fuck? Which one of you? I'm oh, not the virgin. Oh God! People are gonna make fucking Among Us jokes now. I hate it. Not Jackson, me, you're it. you're being awful loud about this statistic. It's almost like you don't want anyone to pussy. suspect you. I, I I've, I've seen a vagina. Or oh two yeah, Andrew. describe it. What are the parts? Yeah, what does it smell uh, like? B- puffy and like a bag of sand. So a woman smells like a bag of <laughs> sand. Bag of sand. <laughs> what? No, that's what it feels what? like. <laughs> <laughs> vagina oh, yeah, feels I like think a we bag found of the sand. culprit. Yeah, I think we got uh, well, to be fair to Jackson, I haven't seen any pussy in my life, so I went, oh no, oh shit. I mean, I've seen a bunch, and that's what it is. That's true. Great. There's fifty percent virgins <laughs> in here. It's exactly what it looks like. Hmm. <laughs> uh. Uh, fuck. I, I, I love these statistics because most of our audience is, I assume, male. I haven't checked the recent, you know, whatever, our, our analytics, but I, I'll just go off on that assumption. Last we checked, I think we had like 5% female viewership. Go figure. And you guys remember micro dicks? Apparently like one in a thousand people has a micro dick. Like yeah. There's a bunch of people who have micro penises in here. Wait, you said one in a thousand? That sounds mm-hmm. super rare then. Super rare? Uh, no, it doesn't. What? One in a thousand? thousand That's extremely lot, rare. Are you Jackson? We, are we you shut serious? down. We shut. We shut down all of society because of COVID. Even though like fewer people than that die in a thousand, but yeah, but you like, say one in one a thousand in a, micro dicks is a that lot. Means, that means nine hundred ninety nine other people have like commendable penises. That's pretty good. That, that means they have average that penises. That also means yeah, average is commendable. What, what that fine. also means, Jackson, is that there is an average of like I don't know hundred. How, how many viewers do we get these days? 100,000? Uh, like 100 people with micro dicks in here, anyway. Sorry, huh? Listening to us. Yeah. It's not, yeah, a one in a thousand is not rare at all. No, that's that, that, common. Well, no. Uh, yeah, I, I guess not when you account for all the people on the planet, but I don't know, it just sounds, sounds more rare when you say one in a thousand to me. It sounds like having a micro penis... Uh, is is more rare than having you know a decent sized penis so that's like something uh, that's something nice i think if you've got a really unique penis you know what i mean uh, what <laughs> what no i don't know what you mean that is not fun at all <laughs> unique it's a, you can't fucking even travel the circuit uh, the, the circus like uh, things anymore like what are you gonna be a sideshow freak like look at the man with the tiny microscopic penis it's yeah but then you can fucked. say i'm one in a thousand yeah, but Not that doesn't great. mean anything useful. Yeah, is it something you yeah. want to be proud of? Well, yeah, no. It's, it's not fun. Not very, it's not useful. You know what is <laughs> fun, though, Andrew? Movement. Being able to oh, the of course I know what's fun. Mm-hmm. I've moved my body. My body has had movements of various kinds. And that's why I'm going to look at movement and say, hey, I think about this a lot. And then I'm going to remember that it actually represents a Nice, clean, amazing pair of watches. A pair. So I can have one for both of my arms, so I will always know what time it is, and it's the time for movement. Movement has also Mm -hmm. expanded into blue light glasses that'll protect your eyes from screens, minimalist jewelry, and more style essentials that will not break the bank. Movement has an unbeatable price point for their watches. You're looking at a four to five hundred dollar watch when you pay for the department store brand. But go through mm-hmm. movement, 
you'll get it at a fraction of the price because they were built online and in their own process from start to finish. Also, hey, maybe one of your, you're one of those guys we were talking about earlier where you're just stuck on the internet. I'm not going to judge you for what forums you go on. You can read about any type of any person you want. But if you're going to be doing that all day, make sure to get some ever scroll blue, ever scroll blue light glasses. They are a game changer and help with eye strain and poor sleeping patterns. If you want to elevate your look with style that won't break the bank, join the movement and get 15% off with free shipping and free returns by going to mvmt.com slash official. That's mvmt.com slash official for 15% off free shipping and free returns. Mm -hmm. Thank you, MVMT. Thank you. Thank you, Movement. Improved my sleep. Yeah, yeah. That is a sad statistic. Yeah. What are we or... going to do about it? We can't just sit a lot around and let it happen. Mm. I do my part by telling people can't to we? stop getting trained on Twitter and Reddit. That's me helping. Trained? Mm-hmm. So many dudes. Oh, you mean like seek grow up on Twitter? Yep. So many dudes live their entire life being trained by Reddit and Twitter on how to interact socially with people. It's, it's not just train is a weird way to say it, but yeah, no, I get he's what right. you mean. He's right. He means like, yeah, like oh, he is people right. being raised just... by the internet, almost. Yeah. Like you don't get that kind of no, it's real not... life social interaction, that training that you need. Well, that, but also just the internet, like Andrew said, it's so babied and boring now. It's it corrupts yeah. you. I don't know. I, I miss the Wild West of the internet. You know, the 4chan era. 4chan I miss it every shooter now too, goddamn but... day of my life. I'm so fucking tired of algorithms. Uh, I, yeah, I miss no when people... No virgins over on 4chan. Uh, <laughs> full of people who have sex. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was I don't like... know. Like, of all, of all the platforms, though, like 4chan in comparison now is fucking wholesome. It, it was, you know... Uh, the people who bully hmm, how would i put this so you guys know how weird it is that like the 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 kind of people who bully say uh, an artist to into suicide because she drew your character with the wrong skin color they, they are always like the tumblr they watch steven universe and my little pony they always pat themselves on the back for being so inclusive and sunshine and smiles and like i've never seen anybody in the doom or the mortal Kombat community do this shit you know it, it's i never see that it's always these it actually people who... uh it goes the opposite way for those communities mortal kombat had a character pack come out where they like put more clothes on the female fighters and everyone got super pissed <laughs> they wanted more yeah, exploitation you, yeah you never it's always these hyper wholesome communities that are completely okay with bullying people and doxing them and you know trying to get them to kill themselves because they drew art wrong or they didn't want to I remember this one case of some porn star didn't want to have sex with a gay porn star and they bullied her into suicide and they felt completely justified in doing it. It's like, okay, so that is not the GTA community doing that. You know, all the fucking satanic panic bullshit from the 80s and 90s where they told us that if you listen to Marilyn Manson, you're going to turn into a sociopath. No, turns out it's fucking Steven Universe. Turns out it's the fucking weird uh, amorphous blobs in that show that lead people to do this kind of shit. It's all the wholesome communities that do this. It wasn't 4chan. I mean, any those kinds of mobs or echo chambers always breed that kind of um, self-righteous attitude where you've got a whole sea of approval waiting at the at now, click of your finger. <laughs> so you can just do whatever you want. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't know if you guys saw Don't Not announced Life is Strange <laughs> yeah. 3. I know, I'm you were so, so excited. sorry to hear that, Kaya. <laughs> I, was I, I watched the fucking trailer so I don't know how they do it every single time I feel like Jesse in Breaking Bad when he's like he can't keep getting away with this he can't keep getting away with this and they do and I don't know how that studio keeps releasing like four games every single fucking year and it's always the same and the last game they released it was called like tell me why and the uh, power was remembering stuff and remembering it wrong I've talked about this on a previous yeah. episode mm -hmm. now the new in the new game it's Life is Strange called uh, True Colors. You guys, uh, do you guys know what the new main character's superpower is, you guys? Yeah, wait, 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 let me take a guess. That's Charlie Being Andrew. honest. No. <laughs> she Andrew, can never tell a lie. I guess? Uh, she can see a person's 
soul and it has a color to it. That's pretty close. You're close. Oh. She has empathy. She can tell. She can. Her superpower is that she can tell when people are sad or happy or angry. <laughs> she knows feelings. Aww. Like this is a fucking superpower now. Who are we playing? An uh, extreme autist? Like how the fuck? So, so we're not at this point where these wholesome, super wholesome world communities are like, oh, you know what? Like, I know when somebody is sad. This must be some sort of a, like, one in a billion superpower. I'm, yeah, like, from the I'm planet Krypton or something. This is... <laughs> really? You, Why you know how to recognize a power? frown. <laughs> well, yeah, with great power comes great responsibility. What are you going to do when you hear somebody laugh? Do you know what laughter means? Like, is that person sad? Is, are they, like, devastated? Or is it happiness? Who knows? I'm not Superman. Who the fuck could tell? This is a superpower now. So you, to these people, you you liked the first game, right? And ironically, you enjoyed it. I did not. I, I mean, not to that degree. No, no. It, it's. I will say this. I've now since played so many more games, especially of the, um, what's that studio? Telltale Games. Mm-hmm. I never knew that Don't Not was so much fucking better. After playing David Cage games and Telltale games, I've done them wrong. Don't Not at least makes coherent games that you can play. On a keyboard and mouse, those two other studios don't. God, tell Oh man, so I don't bad. know. It, like, they, they've taken a nosedive, man. At least in Life is Strange 1, your superpower was, I don't know, manipulating time. That was at least a cool superpower, an actual superpower, not being able to tell when somebody's angry at you. <laughs> That's not a superpower. Remembering <laughs> stuff is not a superpower. <laughs> what kind of an automaton? Did they just hire an, like, an, a literal AI to write this shit? Well, uh, from what I understand, yeah. Kaya, she can also influence other people's feelings to make them happier if they're sad, which to me oh. is incredible. That's what? pretty good. <gasps> yeah. You know, sometimes you know get messages about how this podcast helped people laugh and get through a tough day. I guess we all have superpowers. Making people laugh, putting a smile on people's faces and, uh, and yeah, all that, you where, know, sometimes. Where's our Life is Strange game? Make one about us. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> We'll be your heroes. Unbelievable. This is a thing. Stupid. I don't care. It's got an audience. I don't fucking care. I'm not going to play the trash. I don't care. I don't care. I I am. I bought the fucking ultimate edition, dude. I'm I'm, I'm (laughs) going to lean into it. (laughs) I bought the ultimate edition with... I'm going to play that shit. I'm going to marathon that on Twitch, dude. Because it it perfectly aligns with... The release of it aligns with my one year anniversary of my Twitch channel. It comes out in like five months or so. And they're remastering the first two games too. So I'm like into it. Okay, let's do this. What does the Ultimate Edition get you? More. Uh, the remastered cutting? editions. And I also get too like many the. Feelings. I get the remastered editions. I get the new game. And I also get a cool Raven Goth outfit. Ooh, Jackson. Cool. Whoa. All right. Mm. In game or do they you mean like you get an in outfit game. in your life? Uh, <laughs> in damn. game. You don't get merch. <laughs> that sucks. A fucking game. Like 30 year old people sitting down and actually thinking that it's deep and somehow it teaches them shit. Like this is this is what it's so uh oh my god, it's mind blowing. Sitting down to watch Steven Universe where the message is that friendship is good. Okay, you needed to be told this at 30? You are dangerous. You need to be on a list somewhere. If you are genuinely like an adult going no. through life thinking what? that there is a lesson to be learned still that friendship and niceness is good. Like, yes, normal people learn that when they're four. Wait, Kaya, it's not that they they need to learn this kind of uh, theme or whatever, like about feelings. It's just that they like jerking off to their own um, understanding of feelings being important, I think. Like that they like... I don't know. They, they like. I don't know. They, I don't know. They just like the topic. It's not that they're trying to teach anyone. It's just they like jerking off. Over I just it. really like the plot summary. I might play this as well. Gabe is killed in a mysterious accident. Alex investigates the truth behind the accident using her psychic empathy power that allows her to read and <laughs> manipulate strong emotions, which she perceives as colorful auras, to physically see how others feel around her. Potentially, <laughs> do, you she, do you think she's at Gabe's funeral and she's like, hmm, everyone's sad. <laughs> Let's see if I could cheer him up and she puts on the clown makeup and tap dances. Yeah. But there's also a cost. Was like, I c- huh? Did you know that there's a cost, Kaya? You see, there's the potential that no. she could become infected by their emotions. So no. she might also feel sad. 
<laughs> ah. wow. Oh, so literally just empathy. These people think empathy is such a like a superpower. You know, it, yeah, it, like so metaphysical. Like I saw a sad person, and like it made me feel sad. What is this? Oh. Yeah, you're not seeing through walls here. They, these aren't laser eyes. Why the fuck are you acting like this fantastical power that lets you levitate or some shit? You know what? I can see. I can also physically see how people feel when I'm when my girlfriend has Don't her arms ridiculous. crossed and she's like, nothing's wrong. I can see that she's mad at me. <laughs> oh, Kaya, you must have some kind of superpower. Wow, That's yeah. Impressive. Have you tried out like some kind of, I don't know, therapy or some shit like that to analyze your latent abilities? Are you like an X-Men? Yeah, I, I know. That's what that's what I was thinking. Like, are we going to be in Dr. Xavier's school for the gifted? Like, is, is he going to sit there in a the corner and show her like a smiling face? Like, you have so much potential, young <laughs> Alex. One day you may even surpass me. <laughs> They're going to give her the entrance exam for the school and she's going to be sitting there thinking really hard and go, you seem happy. And Charles Xavier's just going to go, she's right. And everyone's going to applaud. <laughs> he falls out of his chair. <laughs> My God, this is the strongest <laughs> mutant I've ever seen. This empathy powers well, on another I can, level. I can read minds and even she's tougher than me. <laughs> I can so read what, minds what was that dome feelings. Called where, what was that giant machine called where Xavier hooks himself Cerebro. into to see all the Cerebro. 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 Cerebro, yeah. He Cerebro. hooks himself into yeah. Cerebro to see all the people frowning and smiling like, oh, look at them. Look There's at too all much the happy to handle. Yeah, what does it mean? <laughs> he, he doesn't have the power of empathy. He can't handle feelings. Yeah, yeah. It's like Eleven from Stranger Things. There's a blood comes out so of his nose that gonna, he's just draining himself. The fucking X-Men are going to show up to fight Magneto, who's like throwing around magnet shit. And they're going to be like, Magneto, what's wrong? And he's going to go, I don't want to talk about it. They're going to be like, bring in the expert. <laughs> <laughs> they like roll her in like the convoy. <laughs> he's sad and angry. Oh, thank you, Alex. Thank God we have you here. You Alex, what do you see? His soul is like a, a magenta. That's not good. I'm going to need more He's time. He's feeling blue mixed with red anger. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> I couldn't have told from all the shrapnel metal that he's shooting at us. <laughs> My God, the studio, these people. They were grown up. Yeah. Well, right, if yeah. she, well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if she's a real grown up because if she was a real grown up, she'd sleep in a Helix mattress, right? Mm -hmm. That's just a proven fact. You don't need colors to know that. Yeah. You don't need. You can't any... tell because you don't have powers. But Helix mattress makes me feel happy. Exactly. You don't need any sort of magical superpowers. I don't need any magical superpowers. I can be a boring, regular ass human being, which I am, and go. Oh boy, my my long day of not knowing how people are feeling is going terribly, but. It's going to be great when I put my head down, when I when I go to sleep, when I take a little nap, because I'm going to do it on my Helix mattress. My Helix mattress sits in my bedroom and I share it with my girlfriend. So you can you can use two people on a mattress. Helix will not stop you from doing that. And let me tell you something. As someone who sleeps on a Helix mattress, it is a very, very comfortable way to sleep. And if you're thinking, well, I don't really know what kind of way I want to sleep. Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe I want a soft mattress, oh, but firm seems so tempting and I sleep on my side, but sometimes on my back and oh boy, I just move and whatever. There's a Helix quiz, a little fun Helix quiz that will match you with the perfect model of mattress that'll get you exactly the kind of sleep that you want to be looking for. You just have to go to helixsleep.com slash official, take the two minute sleep quiz and be matched to a customized mattress to give you the best sleep of your life. Helix is offering up to $200 off on all mattresses and two free pillows for anyone listening at helixsleep.com slash official. That's helixsleep.com slash official for two free pillows and $200 off. You know, honestly, like they could keep the $200, two free fucking pillows. What up? But they won't. You'll get a discount. Exactly. Helixsleep.com slash official. Hooray. Thank you, Helix. Thank you, Helix. Thanks for the good night of sleep. Yeah. And apparently 72% of our audience could even use it for sex, the mattress. Ooh. Ooh. Just saying. 73%. Mm. Well, it's going to be 72% yeah. of 95%. Because we still oh, have 5% yeah, women. I can't do that math. <laughs> well, whoa, 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 wait. But all 5% of those women are definitely fucking, so. Ah, okay. Yeah, so that still is included. Very good. <laughs>
You make me excited for what Life other is Strange topics? now. I'm just looking yeah, forward to uh, that. Are you? Uh, yeah. Did you play the first few? No, uh, Charlie. I modded oh. the first one. Uh, I did a lot of um, mods in the first Life is Strange to make it really fucking wild, which was cool. But I never actually played the game. Try it, man. I, I'll like. We, if, if you like, as an expert, I'll even do it with you. It's, <laughs> I. Not to give them too much credit, but like, like I said, in retrospect, guide. the first one is infinitely better than every sequel they've released. Because again, at least you had a real superpower. You had... What, wait, what was the superpower it, in one? Time. You could literally rewind time. You can yeah. time travel. That is a that's real so superpower. Much that, yeah, that's, that's, that's so much cooler. That's way That is so much cooler than... I wish I, wish I could read... And feelings what that's what disappoints me because the premise for like a like a grounded sci-fi adventure is there if she could read minds there's a billion and a half stories you could write that would be interesting where it's like oh i can read people's minds this is a really oh. really dangerous power she could overhear someone talking about her she could like hear something that puts her life in danger there's a billion things to write but just the fact that she knows when people are mad it's like i can think of maybe two interesting things you can do with andrew that. What about this? She has the power to, um, you know, see colors or whatever mm -hmm. to do with emotions. She has empathy or whatever, but she can also run really fast like the Flash. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's pretty cool, that's so, right? She's just a Flash then. <laughs> so she's yeah, high speed cool. running around the world going, he's sad, he's angry, she's grumpy, she's pissed, yeah, she's sad. He, you don't you don't get it, Kaya. She's like the Flash, except she she can yeah. see feelings. So she's she better feelings. Flash. Uh, yeah, she's a. It's a like more that scene in the uh, Sherlock Sherlock Holmes movie where it's like two shots to the liver, one kick to the kneecap. He is sad. Now he's angry. <laughs> Six months of trauma. Time to recovery. Nine months with therapy for his sad feelings. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> such a lame thing and, and you just know they're gonna try to throw you for a curve like they're gonna show you a character with a very happy smiley face but you're gonna be able to detect that they're actually really sad inside like yeah like every person <laughs> yeah not everyone is as easy to read as you think they are just because so, they're smiling means they yeah. could still be well, what sad if she, what if she comes across someone that doesn't like uh, present any colors and they don't have any feelings or emotions oh that's gonna be the villain that's yeah. gonna be the villain where he's yeah. not gonna have any feelings oh, and like you're gonna kryptonite. the game's gonna be like oh he's a psychopath is he a bad guy <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> <laughs> what Fucking if don't not <laughs> what if the tw like at some point there's a twist <laughs> where she's uh, uh it's found out that the main character is actually colorblind and she's reading all the colors incorrectly. <laughs> oh, <laughs> she can't even do it. I wish. Whoa. She can't even do a color so reading correctly. Is, the game's not out yet. That would be it's, great. It's not out yet, right? Right. Will no. we will we like to make a little wager that the tutorial is going to be something where she's maybe talking to her mom? Tutorial? Or, yeah, they, all these games have a tutorial where it's like push the arrow and keys no, no, to move. Don't. So, oh, well, like little prompts. Yeah, little prompts. How much you want to bet the yeah. first prompt is going to be she's going to be at breakfast with like her mom or her dad or her aunt or whoever the fuck she lives with, and she's and she'll be like, "Hey, aunt, how are you?" And she'll go, "Oh, I'm doing great, dear." And she'll be like, "Something's wrong. Her aura's blue. I better use my yeah. powers to check check that." <laughs> it's going to be the my first way sense. they introduce it to you. <laughs> it doesn't. And it the doesn't seem gonna like. Be like Yes, I am sad. How did you know? Yeah. <gasps> well, to be honest, dear, I am feeling kind of blue. But how could you tell? That pretty that's pretty strange. Yeah. <laughs> then the credits are gonna start. <laughs> yeah. Life is strange. And it yeah. has to be a secret, like she can tell <laughs> when people are upset, like, oh, I just guessed. I didn't yeah, know. Exactly. Oh, it's nothing. I just, <laughs> I just knew. I, I gotta go run to school. Bye. And then like the fucking happy '90s music starts playing. So is it gonna be? Uh, well, I, I don't think I've played the other games. Is there going to be like an investigate investigation aspect of the game where there's actually gameplay, like you got to solve puzzles and such, or is it just like a linear uh, yeah. kind of yeah, uh, they do that too, yeah. dialogue thing? Oh, so there is actual. Well, that's better than I thought. Honestly, I thought it was just like a no, a, no, it's not. No, <laughs> those segments are fucking. A, they're a pain, Jackson. In every story game, they do. It's like Batman, the Telltale series, and um. No, I'm talking Twin about Mirror, actually like the actual puzzle game. solving, not just looking around a room and clicking on prompts to solve a pretty rudimentary oh. puzzle. No, they don't have that. They just have you walking around a room and investigating shit, just like in you know, Telltale yeah, that's, games. That's, that's boring. 
Yeah, it's yeah. not about the gameplay no. though, Jackson. It's about this story and the emotional investment you feel with the characters. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure she's a very strong character, and I, I think I'd resonate a lot with her because I also have the ability to read feelings or whatever. No, no, so. you don't stop. Just fucking stop. So you're just lying, trying to impress people. Yeah, I don't know I'm when they started this. Like aura it, it, from you right now. So in the first game, like I said, it's time travel. In the second game meaning not before the storm but life is strange too the power is that your younger brother can levitate stuff just like magneto okay that's a superpower this fucker can shoot uh, stuff you know he can make explosions and shit okay and then all of a sudden remembering stuff and then um twin mirror his superpower the guy's superpower is that he he can talk to his dead brother basically or like uh he has an imaginary friend that's a superpower you what, can talk to his imaginary friend. What's that motherfucker going to say that's interesting? He's dead. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> it's not even that. I think I forgot now but because I never finished that one. But it's not even his dead brother. I, I think it literally is just an imaginary friend that he talks to. That's yeah, so which dumb. could be cool if his imaginary friend is like a badass and like teaches him how to be a, like a, some kind of killing machine he or isn't. something cool yeah don't bother he isn't well, what does he teach him I, are these games popular oh my god jackson they are so fun okay You're let me yell on steam hey, right now just a simple yes no i'm no. not yelling at you i'm yelling at life itself because i'm just so fucking i don't know like i feel so despondent at the reviews these fucking games get overwhelmingly positive look at this what was the newest Very one positive. Where, uh, that was memory-based? What was it called? Um, tell Me Why. That's not the newest one. It's the one to the last. It's called Tell that Me is, Why, and wait, it has... That just came out. That, that was super recent. Yeah, it came out last year in August. That's what wow, I'm really saying. These guys, they churn out, out these fucking games. So wait, what's the one after Tell Me Why? Uh, Twin Mirror. How many of these games have they made? I, yeah, I know. A lot. Wow, they made a lot. I know. Jesus Christ. Oh, actually, I don't know if Twin Mirror is on Steam though. Uh, Charlie it might be wow. on the Epic thing only. That's they fine. Made, on they the made store. seven fucking games. I had no idea. I thought they only made like four. Now these guys are dude. They don't it stop. Out. They don't stop because they're just, I guess, so cheap to make. I mean, they're like technologically speaking, these games aren't difficult to make. They all look like shit. They all look like you just zoomed in in Sims 4, right? The They don't use mocap. That's one of the things that we're bragging about in the newest uh, trailer for the new game is they're, they finally moved into the age of using mocap to animate the characters. So congratulations, you're using 30-year-old technology. Don't nod. Yeah, because they're using it better. They're doing These games smiles. don't even get good reviews. That's the yeah, they like, don't. That's, wait, wait, they don't. What do you mean? No. Fucking, do, yeah, they do. Kaya just said they not I just not from uh, not from publications. Maybe users like them, but like they get like seven out of ten, six out of ten from like everywhere. Five out of ten so, for twenty. Kaya, yeah. Dude, that is that's you six that, more than it deserves, though. Yeah, wait, still not well, yeah but the audience is giving it overwhelmingly yeah, positive reviews. Yeah, the audience apparently. might love it, but like actual publications and shit are saying uh, they're well, terrible. Wait. wait, Kaya, do you think that it's um, the games just have a very niche audience of very active members, like that people that buy and highly rate every single game? It's it's the same. Th yes, it's the same thing as with the Steven Universe. Steven Universe is, you know, My Little Pony, Steven Universe. All those shows, they're made for fucking four year olds. But you have these 30 year olds tuning in thinking, oh, this is so amazing. So great. Colorful friendship and magic. Yes. And they give it overwhelmingly positive reviews, even though like they don't recognize what creepy sociopaths they are, that they think that, you know, the, the ability to read sadness is great. It's a superpower. I think it's probably not them feeling like reading feelings is a superpower and more like they just want to read some feelings because they're so good at it on Twitter. So they just yeah. want to keep practicing. <laughs> well, no, yeah, that's probably what it is. They're, they're so uh, empathetic towards the world that, that they make that their entire identity. So they want to uh, role play as it even further in a video game. Oh, yeah. Where, where's the part in uh, Life is Strange where they bully someone to death? I'm sure that'll be <laughs> and there. And cancel them on Twitter. 
It's yeah, all so part of the rule thirty four art that they want correctly, then they're gonna get bullied to death in the game. Makes sense. These games suck so hard. And yet you play them. They must be secretly And yet I good. play them. This game sucks. And I can't wait my... to buy it. <laughs> I can't wait yeah, to buy the I, ultimate I've unfortunately edition. fallen into that thing because this is something... In this regard, I'm a massive hip- hypocrite because I hate when people... They they meme unir- something into success and wealth unironically... Or, or sorry, ironically. Like, you know when they say, mm-hmm. um, who's that dude that made The Room? Tommy was so the emoji Johnny movie. White. Right, right, like you take the room oh, or you yeah. take the emoji movie and everyone's like, oh, dude, this game sucks so much. Two tickets, please. Like, if it sucks so much, stop making that guy fucking famous. Like, Tommy Wiseau is rolling yeah. in dough, yeah. even though Vote he's awful. He is awful. He should be homeless and addicted to crack. Instead, you've made him a fucking millionaire because you're unironic- you're ironically supposedly watching these fucking games and movies that he turns out. It- but, I mean, there's just this morbid curiosity, and it's all because I'm too lazy to pirate these fucking games. So I contribute to the fucking problem by buying the Ultimate Edition. I'm part of the problem now. To be fair to Tommy was so no, though, he was already a multi-millionaire before he made the room. Plus, Kaya, I think that you getting hours of entertainment out of it. You do get hours of entertainment out of it, it sounds like. You, so you do owe them your money. I don't think you <laughs> should be pirating it in that situation anyway. Well, I would never pirate anything, first of all, as you know. I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm not a dummy. I would never do that. My my expressvpn.com slash official subscription is for entirely legal purposes. But... I mean, some of these games, I don't even get any entertainment out of Jax, and others do. Like, Beyond Two Souls, I'm not joking, that was misery for me. Like, some of these games are just fucking... That's the chance, uh, that's like the risk you take. Yeah. With great gaming comes great responsibility. (laughs) Shut the hell up. (laughs) Just, uh, literally, the only thing I ever get out of these games is that I can write them off as a business expense on my taxes. It's like, yeah, I put Beyond Two Souls there. Wait, we're able to do that? Because we talk about it on the podcast? Yeah. Oh, well, he streams it, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You could too, Jackson. Literally, you've streamed before. You could write it off. They don't... Yeah, it's they're, a they're gonna expense, check your officially. streams to make sure you're playing the game. <laughs> they better. <laughs> I mean, they could, but you know, literally just played for ten minutes and say it's a shit game. You've officially reviewed it. I wrote yeah. off my fucking gigantic TV, expensive TV, because I, I used to play games on it on stream. I mean, it works. Our you careers are pretty stuff. ingenious toward business expenses because everything we do is recorded. So if there's ever any doubt of like, oh, did you use it for business? Like, yeah, here's my stream on it. Played it. Yeah, look, there's my video about it. There it is. Yeah. Being used I ate for business. popcorn on stream, therefore, my popcorn maker was a business expense. It's, it's fucking taxes. Yeah. I hate them so much. I had to do mine again recently, and they just make me so fucking mad. So mad. And I was on the phone with my like tax guy, accountant, attorney, whatever they're called. He's like... Accountant. He was like trying to give me a pep talk. Like, oh, isn't it wonderful, Kaya? You're paying so many taxes, but it just means you're earning so much money. Like, dude, shut the fuck up. You suck at this. You suck at encouraging me and make, improving my mood. You're horrible at this. Just shut up. Don't rub it in. Assholes. Well, you know what we should uh, not shut up about is how great Raycon is. Isn't that right, Andrew? I can never shut up about it. I was waiting for Kai to shut up so I could start talking about Raycon. Because I'll I, never shut up about how awesome they are. I can't stop fucking talking about Raycon. I mean, By I the know. way, yeah. so not only is Andrew about to tell you... Sorry, Andrew, but not only can are you, you about to tell our audience about the great... you hurry up and try to talk about Raycon, goddamn? Shut up, Andrew, I'm going to talk... Okay, so not only can you get the amazing deal Andrew's about to tell you about, but if you conduct any business calls on your Raycons, you can write them off as a tax expense, too. <laughs> as a... True story. I don't know, I, I am not allowed to give any legal or financial advice, so I'm gonna... <laughs> so I'm gonna say that's... Are. That's what Kaya said. But what I can say about Raycons... <laughs> is I feel like all of us in this world are just spending more and more time watching screens more than ever. We find ways to watch screens when we're working out. We're finding ways to watch screens when we're talking to other people. We're finding ways to look at screens. And here's the thing. When you're looking at a screen, you're only getting half the experience if you can't hear it. What, are you going to mute your volume because everyone in your house is sleeping? 
What are you going to go somewhere in public and go, oh, I better turn off, better turn off my, my volume on this YouTube video. I don't want anyone else to be annoyed by me. No, that's the stupid, like caveman dumb way of doing it. You could be the future guy with the cool accessory that lets you hear everything without bothering or waking people up by using Raycon wireless earbuds. It doesn't matter if it's a podcast, if it's an audio book, if it's our podcast based audio book. Raycons will fit snugly in your ear and let you hear whatever you need to hear without bugging everyone else around you. They come in a great selection of stylish colors. Personally, I like the electric blue. I thought those were pretty Ooh, yeah. slick. Those that's, are the ones. That's a very stylish one. Those are the ones that I've personally got sitting around. But you can check out all of their different colors and they have enough battery life for six hours of playtime. That's like three movies. God, that's amazing. Raycon is offering 15% off of all of their products if you go to buyraycon.com slash OP. That's all you got to do. 15% off of your entire Raycon order. Grab a pair and a spare and grab a spare for that pair. Give them as a Christmas gift and then take them back because you're too good to not give away your Raycons. 15% off at buyraycon.com slash OP buyraycon.com slash op listen to this show on raycons if you're so bold i won't mm -hmm. tell you what to do but you know they will improve your workouts by a magnitude by the way like everybody who's ever worked out with wired headphones knows especially during squats and shit they always get tangled they always get caught on your knee like mm -hmm. wireless headphones have made my workouts so much better yep Agreed. I used to go running I with hate wires. I used to go running with wired earbuds because it was all I had and it was a pain in the ass. Switch to wireless, never going back. Can't go back. I wish Raycon mm. Raycon, if you're listening, if you have the power to make my entire life wireless, I'd I'd, <laughs> yes, I'd be please. interested. <laughs> There's so many fucking wires in this room. Ugh. Yeah. I hate wires. <laughs> We need to resurrect there. Tesla and to, like hear what a secret was. Do you what guys, was it Tesla that supposedly why, why invented do, wireless energy? Why hasn't complete wireless been uh, widely adopted? I well, feel like we're, we're getting there. We're almost there. Trying. It's, that's do the you, goal. It's just do not you easy. remember when just like six or seven years ago, wireless PC peripherals were seen as cheap and shitty? And it's like, oh, don't ever use a wireless mouse. It's junk. Don't use wireless keyboards. They they cut out and the signal sucks. Yeah. And they're not as responsive and they're laggy. Now it's like one to one. Wireless mice, keyboards, headsets, all that shit. They're like pretty much identical to their wired companions. Yeah. But, but we need to get to the point where we can wire, like wirelessly send energy to the device. Yeah, like, we do. Otherwise, well, we have wireless charging never for certain things. Yeah, in fact, yeah, I'm but, using a wireless but, charger no, no, no. on my phone right now. Yeah, but the, no, the but, wireless charger has a wire to... Sure, yeah, right, it's it's wireless. Wireless. Yeah, so you want to throw electricity at each other. Yes, I do. That's yes. awesome, my man. All wires That's the whole point. Gone. <laughs> I want all that, the wires that's gone. What every wire is. We Yes, we have, we, we have now wireless data transmission. Okay, cool. Wireless electricity is what's the problem. It's not data. We have what Bluetooth. If, okay, what about cool. Like, Making but I don't want to still have to plug my... Like, what huh? if you just made the wires smaller? Would that make you happy, Jackson? No. <laughs> Fuck no. What if you put, like, a little jump in there so it's like, there's, like, a wire and then it I'm not going to be happy until all wires are eradicated. Jackson, That's where we need to get to. Jackson just wants a Tesla Agreed. coil in the middle of his living room. And it just Ooh, zaps whatever yes. the fuck he has in his room. Like, pfft. And it's turned that sounds on. fucking incredible, but also... Yeah. The, the issue awesome. with wires is it's taking up too much space and it looks disgusting, so I don't... I also kind of don't want that Tesla coil. Yeah. Maybe if it was invisible to my eyes <laughs> and like, I would trip over it. <laughs> now it's okay. Now I said we're sense. talking. Yeah, it makes sense. Uh, Look, uh, how are you guys all right with this? Come on. I'm trying to build us a better world. Come on. Give me this. No, this is, no, you're no, demanding no, a better good. world, not building it. Yeah, it sounds cool. Yeah, it just also sounds like theoretically impossible. Uh, Raycon could do it. I'm sure <laughs> they can. They can manage it. Now, now, their time slot say, is over. I'm sure they used to say uh, used to say the same thing about data. Like, oh, how are we ever gonna transmit information if we don't use messenger pigeons and yeah, telegrams? Just That's impossible. Just because you cowards are visionaries like me with such. How would you visions. do it though, Jackson? Yeah. 
Like, um, how do you control electricity in a totally freeform medium? It doesn't seem well, doable. Maybe life is strange. The next game will have that. Yeah, that's the next protagonist huh. power. She can charge her phone with her hands. Yeah, she can. Oh, she can that, yeah, that will be useful. Charge phones from there will be a better power. There would be a better power than remembering stuff. They would totally fucking do that. She can generate low amounts of electricity so she can, like, charge phones and put on lights. And, like, oh, at the end, God, they'll yeah. have the credits wrap up and she's like, maybe I learned with my power that it was just the, how I communicated with it that mattered. Keeping no, people I, together. I already see it. People. They'd, they'd have, like, a really emotional scene where, like, there's a lady on the phone with, like, her dying son and the phone is yeah. about to die, too. So she has to charge the phone on a whim. Shit like that. Oh, she'll be she'll be stuck on a bridge, a collapsing bridge, and she's like got two phones with her. One is the mom's phone, and she's dying to like tell her son she's dying, and the other is her phone to talk to her estranged father. And it's like I've only got enough juice for one charge left. So you have to make the <laughs> choice. Am I the selfless, choice? or do I yeah. finally make this? Yeah, it's gonna be one of those. But then she dials in and Dude. finds out she can do like a giant wave of phone charging beams. <laughs> so she charges Ooh. both. I can just charge the satellites, dude. Like it saves somebody on life support during a during an outage. Yeah. It's going to have like this montage of all her friends after she does the phone charging beam and like two of her friends are going to be camping and he's going to go, huh, I just got phone signal. <laughs> and the other one's going to go, I thought your phone was dead. And he's going to go, it was. <laughs> she, her superpower is being a 5G tower. <laughs> <laughs> I have Wi-Fi. <laughs> that would be useful as fuck. What, her name's Far gonna be more like, useful than reading emotions. Her name's like gonna be like fucking Calypso because it's a Life is Strange game and her grandfather's gonna <laughs> look at his phone and get one text message for the first time in 20 years and go, you go, Calypso. You show the world. That's gonna be like Aiden or Aiden. It was always the name of choice. Yeah. Uh, fucking don't nod. Fucking David Cage. I can't wait for the bastard child that is gonna be born once David Cage finally buys Don't Nod or vice versa. And they merge. Like a Dragon Ball Z fusion dance. Ugh. That'll be fun. <laughs> yeah. I like Detroit Become Human. I love Detroit Become Human. Oh, that I game is amazing. It's so good. I, I don't here. know why you didn't like it, Kaya. It's it's incredible. Oh, do you wanna get me started? No, or do no, you have no, a topic? No, 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 good. No, no, we don't no, no, have another no, Okay. No, no, no. Uh, All right. We don't, we don't want to about talk about how wrong you were. I. Oh my god, shut the fuck up. Don't tempt me. All right, do you guys have anything to say about the Snyder cut that yeah, got released? Yeah, I wanted to bring that up. It I was don't. good. I liked it. Okay, go. I what, how can you think a four hour movie is good? Especially one like that. <laughs> uh, because it, fuck. it improved everything that was wrong with the original one. It's literally yeah, just, just because a passion it improved, pride. If it improves the piece of shit, that doesn't mean the piece of shit is any, <laughs> any better. <laughs> So what did you not like about it besides its runtime? Oh, I didn't watch it. I didn't watch oh, it. Oh, okay. But yeah, that makes sense. For, <laughs> for, I'm not going to fucking sit down and watch a four-hour Justice League movie. Is it really me? four hours? Yeah. So I had no idea. Wow. Zack Snyder How put long? his entire vision into the project to show everyone what he wanted and where he wanted it to go. I don't know why you wouldn't respect that, Jackson. We talk about that oh all the time. Oh, you, I, hey, hey, hey. I, I respect it, but I also respect my time. I'm not sitting down to watch four hours. Jackson, you literally spend 40 hours 100%ing Assassin's Creed. Yeah, that was pretty good, though. <laughs> Holy shit, it's actually 242 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Jesus. Well, yeah, four hours. That's just well, a TV well, show well. by that point. You should just slice it up into with, bits. Like, yeah, but what's wrong yeah, with that? Oh, there's, there's nothing wrong TV with show. that. It's just that's... I, I, at what point can we still call them, like, watchable as movies? At what point do we have to realize four that... Four hours is not watchable. You don't have to watch it as a movie. No. I broke it up over two days. That's, that's my point. At what point yeah. are we... Yeah, you, but you couldn't... You couldn't do that if it was in the theaters. Right. And this, would never, this would never go to theaters. This was only four hours. Yeah, it could oh, be... it would have. No. The Hobbit did. Yeah, it would have. The Hobbit's only If, if COVID half, wasn't a thing, hours. they absolutely no, would have No, there's three the Hobbit theaters. movies about one story. The Hobbit was originally one story, and they split it into three yeah. movies. It was one short Yeah, three story. movies that yeah. are like 17 hours each. I mean, it's the same thing. They absolutely would have put this in the theaters if they could have. Wow. I, apparently, I apparently this, people I love it too it's getting really good reviews no it is a good movie like it's wow. not bad at all every wow. problem the original had is gone and it makes a lot of really good changes like it is an enjoyable did, did movie did they fix the goofy green screen uh, a lot of the CGI is still kind of shitty though from like the original wow. still kind of bad 
But well, I would hope that I would hope that the characters are at least better if they're adding an extra two hours of content there. Mm-hmm. I hope it's not just establishing shots or anything like that. But still, the characters themselves just have never been interesting to me. Like apart from Batman, I'd say. What, you like, don't like the Flash just, with his ability to turn back time from running so fast and going to like yeah, other and now running like, death. Come on, it's man. pretty fucking no. cool. <laughs> no, Flash, Flash is dumb. God, you're what dumb. What? Cyborgs, you're so though? goddamn what about dumb. Cyborgs? You're such a what about fucking cyborgs? idiot. Holy shit. Where to Why? start? Justice League superheroes are fucking awesome. They I don't know really how to are. scold you any harder. Uh, All of them I have cool, it. interesting fucking powers and shit. It's like, God, you're so dumb. Ugh. Like running fast. Yeah, running. Have do you know what the Flash fucking does in the comic books with super speed? Because they don't give a shit. The Flash can phase through walls because he vibrates his molecules between them. <laughs> it's really <Wow>. cool. <laughs> it's the goofiest, most fun shit. Like I, I love DC because they're not afraid to make superheroes just literal gods and fucking weirdos, and they just do dumb things with them. It's great. As as opposed to what's Marvel? Yeah, Marvel tries to make them more, like, relatable and kind of grounded, and it's not as fun. Grounded? Yeah. Yeah, I, well, I don't know well, about that. What part of Thor or the <laughs> yeah. Hulk is grounded? Because every movie <laughs> is about, and every comic is about them being like, oh, Thor's come to Earth and he has to be humble, or, like, the Hulk's like, oh, you know, I'm And he super- controls lightning. Yeah, but you're missing the point. The story's not about the fact he controls lightning. It's about the fact he has an ego. Hulk's story isn't about that he's super strong. It's about that he has a beast inside of him he has to control. Like, they're good stories, but DC stories are usually like, look at these super-powered fucks that are untouchable doing the goofiest shit to one-up each other. It's just more so interesting. Do you like the movie, movie. ironically? It doesn't feel like there's any substance I can't there. tell. It doesn't have to always have substance, and even then, they do have substance. It's just, I think, I like think what? it's a more interesting storytelling platform if it's you're trying to outdo each other with like creative solutions to problems rather than my name is Tony Stark and I am the smartest man ever, but I'm also an alcoholic. Oh darn, do but I it, drink? That when when they do do something outrageous and wacky or whatever to solve an issue, it always just feels like it's coming out of left field to me, like vibrating. If the, if the writing's like, bad, it is, but there's a balance, you know. Okay, so Tony Stark is an alcoholic. That's his shtick. Right? What the fuck do you like? You think Flash as a character? He's just Sheldon Cooper. Yeah. <laughs> He's the quirky social weirdo. Well, uh, that's why Same I'm saying thing. it's not necessarily Lazy the writing. character specifically, but it's what they do with the character that I like, you know, like running fast. Yeah, I don't know why you up- break it down like that. Like that is infinitely cooler than a lot of other powers. He can actually go back and forward in time by running yeah. fast. Like that he, is cool. He literally you were just outruns- talking about how time control is cool, Jackson. And now you're changing uh, it because he gets there because he's fast. There's a fucking... Wait, no, I think time control is cool. I don't think running fast... Too. There's a fucking <laughs> Flash comic, Jackson, <laughs> where, di- where the Flash is going to die. <laughs> and apparently in the Marvel or the DC universe, death like appears to everyone in a form they can relate to. So death shows up as another Flash and they literally have a running contest. And the Flash runs so fast that he runs to a period before death even existed in time. And death just fades away. How do you not think that that's like dumb fun like that's the good okay, kind okay, of so stupid do you, it does sound like dumb fun yeah. but i'm not watching four hours of it i don't know so why do you, all of a sudden like you value it's your goofy? time you literally i binge don't value it. when you were no. here jackson <laughs> you binged always sunny in philadelphia for your third total watch through <laughs> oh, oh my god it's a good jackson. show <laughs> it's a good show it's my comfort show i watch it when i'm going to sleep it's like no yeah, you watched it for entire there. afternoons yeah. while you were here the the difference i was going to sleep the difference between marvel and dc <laughs> is that marvel goes what can we do with this person who has superpowers uh, where as DC goes, what can we do with these superpowers? <laughs> and it's always running back in time to fight It's death. not the only thing. I just it. described three different things the Flash does with super speed that are fun. And they all had to do with running. Because he has super else. speed. <laughs> 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 what the fuck do you want him to do? Solve quantum mechanics with his super speed? That'd be like, boring. Give yeah. me something. <laughs> God. I don't want to say run anymore. Jokes. And I also have my <laughs> super rewatchable, you know, comfort shows. But that reminds me, even when I was in uh, America, Jackson was also watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> we, were, we were like downstairs. Hey, Jack, has Jackson and his girlfriend come out of the room yet? So no, like they're watching Always Sunny in Philadelphia. God, that sounds miserable. <laughs> it was so good though, Charlie. You still got to watch It's Always Sunny. You need to. It's good. 
To be fair to Jackson, Always Sunny is, it, is an incredible show. It is a good show, Thank but I don't you. know if I'd watch the whole thing it. three times. You haven't watched yep. Justice League either, and you have very strong opinions on it. Because it's four <laughs> hours long. I don't, Always I Sunny is 200 watch, hours no, long with seven I wouldn't seasons. watch a four-hour long episode of It's Always Sunny. But that's That'd just watching much. four episodes. That'd be too much for one man to handle. No, episodes are paced differently. Jesus Christ. They are. They're... they're, they're the episodic content is always paced so differently. Why? It's not just splitting no, a movie into three could, parts or whatever. You could find appropriate places to watch the movie in chunks. You just don't have to watch them in the same time frame of chunks. Like, make the first part 20 minutes, make the same the second part 45. Just pace it but to where it's... too much chaos. What are you, are you talking about? Chaos. <laughs> Most streaming services that. Doesn't do that now I anyway. Shows are, like, anywhere between 25 to 35 minutes now. God, I just don't want to watch four hours of it. Well, then watch it in chunks. Me. You Just watch the entire Mandalorian. If you put them all together, that'd be what? Like three hours? You had no problem with that. Yeah, they, they, they got you there, Jackson. You watch hours. the fucking Star Wars movies. Yeah. So if there's ever been a waste of time, it's those. He watches then, the Star yeah, Wars no, movies no, multiple agreed. times and yeah. then says he values his fucking time. I don't watch them in a row. They got you. And no, but if there was a four yes. hour long Star Wars movie, it better You'd watch fucking... It. It better be worth it. I, yeah, I'd watch it. But so, it so be then worth why? It. it just sounds like you're being a hypocrite with your hobbies. If it's a Star Wars movie, you're like, well, if it's worth it, I'll watch it. But if it's a Justice League movie, you're like, oh, no one has time for this. Ooh. No, I never said no one has time for it. I said I don't have to. I, I don't want to. I don't want to use my time that way. But you do it for Star Wars. So you'd rather watch yeah, Star Wars Yeah, because I be like mad. Star Wars. No, you don't. You literally fucking hate all the new Star Wars movies just like everybody else. <laughs> I like Star Wars as a friend, like as an idea, as a concept. Oh, as an idea. Uh, it could be uh, yeah, 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 for seven Christ, hours for an you idea. absolute dumb motherfuckers. I'm not saying I wouldn't watch a four hour long Star Wars movie for those in chat. I, I would because I like Star Wars, but it better be worth it. If I'm sitting there for four hours, yeah, but they and aren't you know something it's worth that's it before they, you. But they aren't worth it, Jackson. They are never worth it. None of the shows, they're all shit. Okay, and these guys are just telling you that same thing with the Snyder Cut, and you're like, no, that's bad. What? No, they're, they're praising it. What? Who's praising Ch it? No, no, what? Nobody's Charlie praising the Star Wars movies, Jackson. What? No. <laughs> I wouldn't ever claim that anyone's praising the Star Wars movies here. That, that would be okay. suicide. No, I'm saying Charlie's praising the Snyder Cut. Yeah, it's good. Is. It is good. Okay, even better then. So but you no. watch a movie that you hate, the Star Wars movies. These guys are telling you, well, the Snyder Cut is actually not bad. It's actually good. And you're saying, no, I, I still won't watch that. So you'll yeah, watch it's something that you know is bad. Because I, I don't like Justice League. I don't like I don't like DC superheroes apart from Batman. So I don't, I don't, And it's just more content from Justice League. And I didn't like that movie anyway. So, so let me put it this way then. If the movie was good, but not about superheroes, would you watch it? Well, you'd have to tell me uh, what it's about. So yeah. let's, let's say, so like, look, I'm, I'm, look, I'm just saying that I, like, what was that movie that went straight to Netflix? That was like almost four hours long. The Scorsese. The Irishman. Irishman. Yeah. The Irishman. Yeah. yeah. yeah no, I, I get the point you're trying to make. Like it's get over yourself. These fucking directors, man, a four hour movie, wrap it up. Wrap it up, okay? That's more unforgivable for The Irishman, though, because that's exactly how long you wanted it to be. The Snyder one is literally, okay, I got fucked the first time. Let me show you everything I thought would be cool. And he put it all into one giant package for fans. I'm happy. I, look, I, I'm happy the Snyder cut is there for those who want it. I just don't want to watch it. That's that's my preference. I, I, the source material that's there is not interesting enough to me to warrant four hours. And that's fair. But Star Wars, on the other hand, <laughs> now you got me thinking. It's a turd. God, yeah, Star Wars is fucking yeah. bad. I'm, I'm glad we came back to that. Yeah. <laughs> Any excuse to shit on we always Star end up Wars? There. Yeah, uh, we, somehow yeah, we always so end up there. I mean, we can keep shitting on Marvel if you want. Jackson, do you watch the Marvel the, no, I, the I, dozen I'm or really... so TV shows they're releasing now? No, no. Um, okay. And it's not. It's not just DC. I dislike either. I'm. I'm, I'm just kind of tired of superhero movies in general star wars yeah, is so. very much like a superhero thing yeah. as well though star it wars is, is literally movie. based on the modern hero myth or whatever i forgot the name of it specifically the hero's journey that's it yeah the hero's journey yeah, yeah. um but I, I was like i don't know raised on star wars i guess it's 
part of my DNA almost to yeah, enjoy the Star Wars and I was universe. raised on Batman and superheroes. I'm not <laughs> trying to take away your Batman. <laughs> your yes, you were. It, it, really, it really sounds canceled. like you're just kind of like, oh, superheroes dumb, Star Wars good. And that's like your only reasons behind this. No, no, I would still watch a decent Batman movie. I, I like Batman. It or is even a decent, decent Batman movie. It's what the Justice League movie is, if apparently. it's not four hours long. I'm not ready but to give it a chance. But if you could split it up into a, t- a TV show, watch it like you would the not watch a four hour. You would not watch a four-hour Star Wars movie. I'd if it was it good chunks. enough, I, I don't care that much about Star Wars, but I've heard enough good things about The Mandalorian that I'm consider watching it. I even, mm-hmm. Charlie can vouch for this. I texted him a couple weeks ago asking, is The Mandalorian worth watching? Because I wasn't yep. sure. He did do that. And I yeah. did say yes. If things are good, they outweigh like what their con- uh, context is. It's still worth watching yeah, a good story. F- a four hour movie has to be like a masterpiece for me to consider. Uh, it. Just like the Irishman. <laughs> I never watched yeah. it. <laughs> I never watched it because no. I, I, I made that mental dilemma or I thought about it in my head. Like, is this going to be worth four hours? And I said, it's just not worth taking the risk. So I turned off Netflix and booted up It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> Which is well, a probably, God knows how long. probably deep. spent a lot more than uh, see, four hours and watching. Yeah, Jackson, and that's the other thing. The Irish that's the other I thing. I'll bet you're the kind of person who doesn't watch one show, at, one episode of a show at a time. You probably watch them in chunks. He doesn't. He watches in chunks 100%. He binges. Yeah, so then what's the difference between watching three hours of a TV show and watching four hours of one movie? Because he gets to watch something he's already seen three times. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A silly yeah, question. but what is it about that comfort that <laughs> that you know the, the show gives you when you've already seen it? Like every year, every single year, I will rewatch Monk House and Breaking Bad yeah. and Better Call Saul. God, like, those are all good know. choices, though. I don't, it's they just are. it's just comfort. It's just comfort. Have, it's like have something House, safe. Has House and not House uh, has Monk aged well? Because I've been wanting to rewatch that. That show is oh, amazing. Yeah, of course it has. Andrew, I still cry like a bitch. Oh. It's it's the most wholesome fucking show. It's, it's such the best. a great mystery it. show. I love it. It is. God. I love do, do you, What's Monk. your favorite episode? The one I always remember a lot is when he's on the game show and he figures out how they're cheating. Yeah. That's such a great episode. I love that. When did you watch Monk? Because when it was premiering on TV. It, none of you had seen it. I watched it back really? when it. Oh, yeah. I fucking loved Monk. Oh. I watched new episodes when they came out. It was one of my favorite shows at the time. It's a great show. Yeah. Monk is great. It's so fucking good. Yeah. And it my favorite got, is probably it, like it the last. Back. I don't know. Fuck. They're all so good. Yeah, it never got bad. It was like no. good from start it, to finish. It ended when it should have. Every season had mm-hmm. great episodes. Yeah. The plot went good places and was interesting. It was it was just so good. It was this great, quaint, wholesome, episodic. Like every episode, he solves a different mystery. And I guess my favorite is the one where he starts taking like antipsychotics or something. Andrew, he, he <laughs> pr- starts pretending to be cool. Oh yeah. <laughs> He buys a he buys a fucking Ferrari and shit. <laughs> he starts hitting on his secretary. That was my favorite. That is so oh, good. God, what a good show. Eight Hard seasons. Hard to recommend to anybody listening who hasn't seen that show. It's very old at this point. It's like, I don't know, 30, 20 years or so, but still a great show. God. Such a heartbreaking show, too. They really knew how to pull your heartstrings. Oh, I cry like a bitch. I know. Every time. Ugh. Every time his fucking wife is mentioned. God, there's an episode where ah. uh, the his partner, the regular detective, shows up to his house. And he, you know how Monk has like everything at right angles and everything's got to be clean. Stottlemyre, But there's, yeah. there's one fucking table in his living room that's at a right, that, not at a right angle. It's like off center. Yeah. And the detective yeah, keeps the trying table. to, yeah, he keeps trying to put it back. But Monk always puts it to this like off kilter angle. And you find out it's because when his wife was alive, she would move it out of the way so she could put her feet up mm-hmm. and it's like oh god I no know. Uh, <laughs> what a show <laughs> such a good show oh so we awesome. should rewatch it i will i might it. just after this i miss it <laughs> people are asking where it's streaming uh you can get it on expressvpn.com slash official <laughs> and probably also amazon prime <laughs> uh, i think it was on hulu for a while uh it's on netflix actually Ooh. so depending Ooh. on your region that yeah brand. there may or may not be a vpn out there for you also it's on amazon prime so <laughs> there you go uh. yeah it's now on prime video oh it's included you don't even have to buy it look at that thank you tony oh, yeah. shellboob yeah all eight seasons on episode on amazon well, okay prime. so 
before we wrap up, that's that's my basically is I mentioned my comfort shows are Monk House, Breaking Bad, and Better Call Saul. So what are you guys' comfort shows that you rewatch almost every Malcolm year? Malcolm in uh, the fucking so middle. Oh, I have seen the okay. entirety of Malcolm in the Middle, no joke, probably seven times. It's, it's just perfect and never gets boring. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, mine is it's always sunny in Philadelphia, obviously, okay, but true. also Futurama. I, I've, oh, I have to watch I, that, rewatch it one of these days. I love that show too. Yeah, I love it. Also a great comfort show. Charlie? Uh, I usually don't watch shows multiple times. The only shows I've even watched multiple times are like Code Geass and Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh, you rewatched Code Geass? I'm watching that, oh, that right counts. now. Yeah, I, it's probably is, still it's my favorite good? anime. Yeah. Wow. Damn, I'm, I'm only on like episode three, but I like it so far. Yeah, oh, it, it only gets better. It, my, it, has, it has so much. My so favorite much part shit. of it is the Pizza Hut sponsorships. <laughs> yeah. it's always great <laughs> every time i see that big dumb logo in a scene it just takes me out of it immediately yeah but yeah i think i think it's a show you will also like andrew it is a very oh, yeah. very I'm, very good I'm, show i'm on like episode three or four and so far it, I, I, it's not like incredibly won me over yet but i like the premise so i want to see where it goes yeah it, it the will, world is really there. good though yeah yeah good shit yeah, well, All we right. can wrap on that note. Mm -hmm. That's a happy note to end on. Um, mm -hmm. Thank you to my co-hosts for sharing this last hour and 20 minutes with me. Appreciate it. Uh, making me less lonely. That's cool. Thanks. Um, and thank you to everyone at home for tuning in. We've got a Patreon, patreon.com slash the official podcast. Bonus episodes mm -hmm. going up soon. Comfort and content. Yeah, yeah, you can listen to us while you go to sleep. Like I watch Futurama when I go to sleep. You can do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, let us uh, let us know what you thought of the Snyder Cut. Do you think four hours was worth it? Let us <laughs> Leave us a five star review on Apple Podcasts with your opinion, please. It helps. <laughs> Just yeah. leave us a five star review, please. Yeah. Thanks for watching, right. guys. See you next week. Thank you. Bye, Bye. everyone. Thank you. Boy. Bye-bye.